I saw when I was in Algeria, people said, Mbarula ran away from, I was in the NWC meeting, which was not held here. And I called the sheriff. I said, what is this movie you are organizing? He said, no. Hey, this is not a movie. The truck was just passing. I said, what is your problem? What is this movie you are organizing there at Lutuli House with some truck there? How can you come with a small truck? I mean, that thing will fit only this. And they come here, they organize a movie here. Mashengi must explain the whole day. At the end of the day, if we are found, we don't win a case, we have to pay, we'll pay. This tax. But is cock. That's what they say. Now, Nishogu Guti, when Koka Jani, Ikialo Laz Guti Aliko, by various media outlets, of course, fed by the same people, nothing wrong about the media because they report what they are told. Regarding the legal dispute between the ANC and Ezuluini, it is imperative to clarify the actual state of affairs in this matter. Initially, I will provide background and the context to the genesis of this issue before summarizing our current position. During the 2019 general elections campaign, I was appointed the head of the ANC's election campaign. My responsibilities included overseeing various aspects of the campaign including procuring elections material. Contrary to some claims, we engaged a different firm, not an election campaign. In 2020, Ezuluni initiated uh, legal proceedings against us in the High Court of Johannesburg, claiming payment for material used in the 2019 elections, including banners. As the head of the ANC's election campaign then, the Treasurer General Paul Mashatile and I had complete oversight of contracts and approvals for election materials. We dealt with a number of companies um, and they were never approached by Ezulwini to provide uh, such materials. The alleged debt to Ezulwini was surprising, given our lack of engagement with them. Upon learning of this supposed uh, debt, we initiated an investigation to understand its origins. It emerged that uh, two junior staff members without authorization from either myself or the TG had been dealing with Ezulu. The ANC leadership did not sanction these interactions. A number of allegations have emerged uh, through faceless sources that one of these junior staff has got uh, blood relations with myself. I've got no blood relationship except comradeship with this individual. And uh, to delve deeper, we commissioned a forensic investigation by the esteemed Edward Nathan Sonnesberg Forensics. The investigation completed early in 2023 revealed criminality and corruption between Ezuluini and the unauthorized staff members. Based on these findings, we sought to introduce the forensic report as evidence in the Supreme Court of Appeal. However, the SCA dismissed this aspect of the appeal, thus rejecting the entire appeal. We are now taking this matter to the Constitutional Court hoping they will accept the forensic report into evidence at this late stage. The report provides 
incontrovertible evidence of a Zulu offering substantial bribes to the two staff members. These individuals in turn forged uh, documents presented to a Zulu falsely indicating that the ANC had engaged in their services. There is no evidence to suggest that a Zulu was responsible for erecting posters and banners for the ANC during this period. If they did, it was under fraudulent pretenses. In summary, we hope the Constitutional Court will consider these facts. This issue is significant for the ANC and of national importance, given the public interest it has garnered. Comrades and supporters of the African National Congress remain steadfast in addressing the Ezulu matter. We urge each member and supporter to stay united during uh, these uh, challenging times. Our unwavering trust in the judicial system, especially the Constitutional Court, has led to a strategic pause of execution, demonstrating our confidence in fair judicial outcomes. We stand together against those attempting to manipulate this issue for political gain, upholding the principles of good governance, inspired by leaders like Chief uh, Lutuli and Winnie Mandela, who have actively pursued those implicated in our internal forensic investigation. Our commitment is to the judicial process, rather than engaging in unproductive public space. Financially, the leaders like Lillian Goy stands unshaken, brave and steadfast. We continue to advance in unity and strength. In other words, we fear focus. I can put my head on the block and no one will liquidate the African National Congress. As the ANC, we are not going to an AI-generated Zulu. Artificial elite, the ANC paying millions of rents to something that never happened. If we procured posters, 102 million, those organizations who know how much it costs for a poster, the ANC campaign and everything else, it would have meant that we still have those posters up until now. It's a lot of money. Uh, but nonetheless, they are determined, they are determined through this fraudulent uh, behavior to basically even liquidate or make it a point that the ANC is declared insolvent. For, for a service they've never rendered. They've got connections, they connive, they've got connections even in the ANC. You've got comrades who will call you that uh, they know them. And therefore, they are making uh, suggestions about this and that in terms of the case. All what we want to tell them is that comrades must desist from that. There was never, never, ever a procurement with a Zulu. Even if they may know each other from Newcastle or wherever they come from, there was never a procurement. This is a fraudulent matter. The ANC meet its obligations. There are people we owe in the ANC uh, <clears throat> for the longest of time and we have entered into terms of payment with them. It's the first time that uh, we are facing a fraudulent matter and people are determined to extort millions of rents from the African National Congress. And in certain quarters they call themselves ANC members. Now, we will not go to court. It is costly if we owe to people. 
will simply settle and pay them in installments. The fact of the matter is that we never procured. And the courts also, because of our legal positioning, have found against us. Um, in this particular instance, knowing very well on our part that uh, we never procured these posters. And they are nowhere where you can say you saw them in the campaign uh, of the elections. So, we're not fighting a case of a black company that procured with the ANC and the ANC does not want to pay the company. We'll never do that. We've got many people who love this movement, who their children have gone to bed sometimes with bigger challenges because of their indebtedness to the African National Congress. And they are owed lots of money. And the ANC have entered into terms to pay them. And we pay them. And we will pay them. In this particular instance, <clears throat> this is not the same case. It's a case of people who have met, worked with our staff internally in the organization and decided to defraud the organization and milk millions out of the ANC. We wake up every day at 7 o'clock in the morning in the election war room. And the first item on our agenda all the time was a procurement of a material, publicity material for the elections. As Uluini never came to our agenda. Even this letter using uh, my signature and all of that was done fraudulently. One sentence. Because somebody was given the power and the authority to execute. Mashatile never signed to concur. Where will he have gotten the money, 102 million for posters? How can you get the organization into such debt without a consultation? Nobody has such authority, even companies, in terms of good governance, CEOs, they've got a limit. I had no limit of 102 million to procure posters for the ANC. As Zuluini, they know that. They know that, but they insist on this and go to the courts and all of that. All the people we owe, we are committed to their full payment in installment. We enter into terms with them. This was never there. It was never part of uh, those companies that we had to procure with as the African National Congress.